Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another video. My name is Gemma and we're here with the FOMO Book Club. So my fabulous co-hosts Jack and Alice. Oh, you did the right. right way. First time. That was that was special. That was really special. Um and oh I have a little banner which I probably should have put up before we started. <laughs> Welcome to the FOMO Book Club. Boop, boop, boop. Um and apologies that this is late. We seem to have been incapable of like putting our diaries together this month. Everyone seems to have had a really busy, <laughs> really busy March. No, February, yeah. because oh, it was supposed to be February, wasn't it? And now it's yeah, we're very late, but we've got a lot to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully, uh, it gave everyone lots of time to read the book. Exactly, extra reading time yeah. for people. <laughs> so, uh, let us know if you're here. Give us a hello. I think this is going to be quite an interesting chat <laughs> of the book. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit concerned yeah. about how it might go. Yeah. Some of our most interesting content today, I would say, in this book. I think so. I think so. Oh, the lovely Jeff is here. Hi, Jen. Uh, Zach, hello. Hi, uh, And Kate. Hi, Kate. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the fabulous Berna. Oh, Berna, hi. hi. So, thanks, guys, for joining us. Um, and thank you for bearing with us while we got this scheduled. So let's start. Oh, Martha's here too. So we'll just say hello to Martha. <laughs> let's start with our general overall thoughts. Ah, oh, I've left mine upstairs. I'm so bad. The prepared. one time you did have a copy of it. The one time. That's because I'm so used to no. not having a typical copy. I just yeah, oh. didn't even think about it. Is it, is so, it oh yeah, and there will be lots of spoilers, guys. Yeah. So if you haven't read it, we're gonna be we're gonna be going deep. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Please don't say that. Ah, I'm already laughing. <laughs> Not for this book. <laughs> oh, dear God. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm looking forward to your face during this this chat, Alice. <laughs> I'm going to hide behind my book. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, it was your first Sarah Waters. How did you get on? It was my first Sarah Waters, yeah. So you would kind of, yeah, but I imagine that probably hit you like a ton of bricks, certain parts. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. I'll we'll talk about that shortly. <laughs> Yeah, overall thoughts. Yeah, well, my my thought because it's my not my first Sarah Waters book, but it's my, only my second. It's only my second book by her. So um, overall, I really enjoyed it. Overall, but I do have thoughts <laughs> <laughs> about parts a bit of it, <laughs> and yeah. um, about certain characters and stuff like that. Um, I kind of felt like I don't know if it's because I was aware this is her debut novel, but it read like that to me. Like, really and but an amazing debut mm. but for her mm. for like the, the other book I read of hers is Fingersmith and that's just, just yeah. that is all the way an absolute just stonker of a book like I can't fault that book in any way like I love that book so for me this one was enjoyable and I love her style I love her writing style I think she's like engaging and um her knowledge of the time period and everything is great um but yeah, I think it it, it wasn't perfect. Put it that way. Wasn't perfect. Yeah. So. Alice, what were your thoughts? So I do think I do agree with that. I think that even though I haven't read a Sarah Waters before, I both felt in safe hands and felt like there was better to come. Mm. Like I suppose because the one I'd always envisioned starting with and thought that I would most want to read would be Fingersmith. Um, but I think that this is like an amazing debut, like you said, but mm. I think that you could kind of see the promise of books to come, mm. like knowing that it's a debut, but I, I think it was a great read. It wasn't personally a favourite of mine, but 
I'm so excited to read the rest of her work. So, so excited. I thought it was really good. I think I'd agree. I didn't actually realise it was her debut until, Jack, you mentioned it earlier today. <laughs> um, but it does fill me with a bit more hope for the rest of her body of work because I did find the first hundred or so pages quite mm. slow going. I remember I left yes. Alice a message and I was like, oh no, I'm going to get kicked off booktube because I don't like it. Um, mm. but, <laughs> but I did feel like it really grew from that point. I guess from, mm. from London onwards, yeah. I felt like it, it went from strength to strength. Um, and the characters were really quite interesting and I, I know we're going to talk about that quite a lot more as we go through but yeah overall I enjoyed it um but it was a bit of a slow start for me I found it a slow I start think. as well actually now you say that I was just desperate for her to get out of Whitstable like get yeah. out <laughs> come on I want this to start what's going on I was like how many times did you watch happen. this bloody show <laughs> <laughs> I know also so we probably will get to this but I just keep laughing about the fact that they're all so amazed about this woman. I know, I know it's a it's it's a taboo, but like she's literally just dressing up like a man and singing. And I was like, wow. Like everyone's like, whoa, she's amazing. <laughs> and I know it's like obviously it's you know a woman in trousers, very Victorian thing. It's like, oh, we can see she's got legs, um, all that kind of thing. But at the same time, I just kept thinking, God, they were starved for entertainment. My God. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's like it's like and, and everyone loved it it was like this is so fantastic and so different and then they were like oh you know anyway we're getting to spoilers we're getting to that at some point later but it just kind of just tickled me a little bit and there must be a whole history of that because obviously Sarah Waters hasn't plucked all this out of thin air but mm. um, yeah, yeah just kind of maybe go God, <laughs> what is she so you know obviously she fancies her but in terms of other than that why is this act so successful <laughs> I don't get yeah. it at all <laughs> yeah Completely agree. Completely agree. Um, we've got uh, Paris, Texas here. Hello. Hello. Um, ready to be spoiled. Sorry to say I didn't read the book. It's fine. It's fine. We'll fill you in on what you missed. <laughs> um, Literally everything yeah. you say tonight could be a pun. Is the problem. I know. <laughs> It's I mean, very double entendre. Like a, one of those, it's like trombone things. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Um, Zach hasn't rated it yet, but leaning towards three and a half, which I think would be a fair rating. I, think that's I gave a it fair four. Rating, actually. Yeah. I gave it four to you. Um, Martha, perfect book club. To start the long weekend off, my first Sarah Waters to uh, manage my 20th anniversary hardback. Nice, mm. lovely. lovely. Nice. This is the 20th anniversary edition, but it's just the paperback, the cheap version, the cheap one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one has a gorgeous chapter at the end where she reflects on how she felt about her first book 20 years later. That's cool. Yes, it does oh, have that actually. Cool. Yeah, I didn't read it yet, but um, I, I listened to the audio book and she, I don't know if it's, the, it's, and the narrator reads that part, so the audio book has that as well. So, but yeah. Cool. I like that. Um, Berna, overall found the writing style very good, but the plot, especially in the middle section, kind of drives for me. So eight out of ten there. Um, Jennifer's read that extra bit uh, and... How she can tell it's her debut, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we're going to move to the beginning of the book now, and a bit of a discussion on Nan's family and her upbringing, uh, which is down in Kent, so Alice's Alice way. Alice's of the woods. Yeah. I love Whitstable. Yeah, I thought I thought the um, I was drawn in like probably more than you were, Gem, <laughs> from the sound of it by. Like I, I found it was the sort of book that I had to read really slowly, to be honest. But I found the beginning bit, my favourite thing about it was like being able to picture Whitstable because I've been there quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, like finding out the, obviously I've not read any non-fiction about it, so I don't know how accurate it is, but finding out like what it was like in Victorian times and um, all the like Easter stuff, I found it pretty interesting. 
I did as well. I actually really liked the start. So when you were saying it was slow, I was like, oh, I like it. I like the whole scene <laughs> setting. I like Whitstable. I like Victorian era stuff. So I was kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm like this. I didn't, it, when she was watching that show over and over again, though, I got a bit like, come on, get out of there. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, let's start stop watching long. the show now. Yes, we, we, we get it. You're obsessed. It's fine. Move on. <laughs> then I but, went to the show 10 more times and then I did this instead. Mm -hmm. But this is the thing, like her upbringing and her, all of her, her innocence. And this is why I kind of like, we'll talk about her as a character at some point, but I just found that the, 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 I mean, people do change massively, they do, right? But mm. her sort of roller coaster of the kind of person she became, the journey she went on was just like I, a bit too, I don't know, I, I didn't quite get it, I didn't quite believe it. And I think given her, her beginnings and how innocent she was and how all of this she was and how, yeah, I just didn't quite, I didn't quite believe the trajectory that she took mm. not just in what she chose to do because that's fine that that's mm. what did, wasn't unbelievable for me what was unbelievable for me is how changed she was as a person but then I suppose that's mm. true of what happened to her I was gonna say do you not think that her <clears throat> innocence played into like her terrible decision making at times like yeah. oh I yes, thought this would be all right so I did it <laughs> like no stop doing it in the beginning in the beginning, yeah. I think you could say that, but I think she, yeah, she was very, very <laughs> you know, she, I mean, she really did get sucked into the seedier side of life. So, of course, you can see that's going to rub off on her. And again, another <laughs> double entendre, but basically, she's she, um, she becomes so <laughs> got to the point where I just didn't like mm. her, I just didn't like her, and I think that mm. was part of the reason why I didn't. Not that I didn't love because actually having an emotion about a character is a good thing, regardless, either way or the other. I think it was fine for me. But I just didn't like her as a character and the way that she was with, with people and that very manipulative and stuff. And she did redeem herself, I suppose, but we'll talk about all that. But yeah, the start of it, all of her her family and the innocence of it all. And then she kind of just up and left them and completely forgot about them. But she's a teenager in love. And as we know, we've talked about this in the past, a teenager in love is not the most sensible. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, but I mean, she um, came from a really loving family, right? Yeah. So her, her parents it difficult. seemed really. Yeah. Why yeah, she didn't go back she just, there? Why she, she never felt like she could go home? And it seemed a bit bizarre her, to me. I felt like the whole that family. family. Yeah, yeah. Her, so her family kind of she just kind of dropped her family, which mm. you can understand. But once she was in that bad position. And you can get it. She's obviously traumatized or whatever. She's gone into this deep, dark place. But her her family were very loving towards her. Her sister was the only one who was really kind of like, "Don't want to know your life. I don't want to know what's going on." Mm -hmm. But everyone else is so friendly. And they, when she brought Kitty back there with her and everything, and I don't know, just I just felt, uh, yeah, that that bit to me was a bit. I can't. I don't get it. I don't get mm -hmm. why. She's not why she's lost complete contact with her family. I did feel like she could have turned to them at any point. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. Like, I suppose it wouldn't have made as good a story. I think like, no. I'm going back to Whitstable. Bye. This is true. The end. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to go back to my lovely family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I think the most important question of the whole book is um, oysters. Love them or hate them. So, in the comments, we want to know. I'm Alice, have you got an opinion? <laughs> <laughs> have oh, I got an opinion about oysters? I think they're pretty grim. I have tried one, and I, uh, the only oyster I've actually tried was actually in Whitstable on the beach in so, Whitstable. Um, I had Whitstable oysters with my first oysters. Mm. Mm. Do you I like them, Jack? I, I do like them, but. I, I, I've often wondered to myself, because you have to cover them in so much stuff, like you cover yeah. them in Tabasco and you cover them in like shallots and vinegar and mm. what have you. And I've often thought to myself, would I eat one without any of that on it? Probably not. <laughs> no, I had about a bottle of Tabasco on it and then it just yeah. tastes like Tabasco. But, but... Exactly. And I'm like, mm, I love this tabasco thing. Yeah. And it's like, I've thought about it in recent years and I've thought, I, I, I love it. I like the idea of it. And I've had them in, there's an amazing place. If anyone is lives near London, there's an amazing place in Borough Market where I would hide, if you like oysters, go there. It's amazing. It's called, um, I think it's called Smith Brothers. And they're amazing. And they have all these different, like, 
Thai style kind of sauces that go on them and all sorts. They're really good. And then I thought, yeah, that was amazing. But the sauces were amazing. And the oysters were very mm. fresh. However, would I eat an oyster without anything on it? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I would actually. I definitely so, would not eat one without anything on it. So what I'm saying is like, how good can they be if I have to cover them and I just yeah. <laughs> but I do enjoy them when I have them, but like I said, I'm enjoying the the variety of stuff. Mm, I don't really like any sort of food that comes in shells. <laughs> I like seafood. I don't like I don't like cockles or whelks or anything like that. I don't I've like tried that. cockles at the football and they were oh. gross. Chewy. Yeah, in Charlton I've tried those. Oh. But ugh. Oysters used to be a real staple of the, the diet for like poor people in the uh, south of London, south of England. That's like a, that was it. That was protein, like oyster pie, and mm. you know it used to be a staple thing. Yeah, it's not for me. Like I'm talking about like Victorian times. <laughs> I'm talking about like long time ago, you know, because they weren't they weren't considered a delicacy. They were just like what yeah. they had. Yeah, no. How big? <laughs> This no, I think my exact response to Alice earlier was, "Why would I eat salty snot in a shell?" Um, <laughs> my brother's like they're the they're the what is it he calls them? Oh, I can't remember. Basically, that they're the thing that that they're filtering all the crap out of the water. So why, mm. are, you, why are you eating it? And I was like, oh, I it. Of it. It has he has a good point. Absolutely <laughs> not. Um, <laughs> Just have a quick look at some comments. So the first third was the best part for Zach. Interesting. I think, yeah. Zach's Let's having see. similar feelings about <laughs> parasexes that Rose is giving me FOMO. It's very nice. I've had a stressful day. <laughs> oh dear. Um oh no. Loving, loving the oysters. Outrageous. Burner's neutral. I don't know how you I'm a neutral. I'm a neutral. Disgusting <laughs> food. Um, I'd literally, I'd rather eat an avocado. I'd rather eat pineapple on pizza than an oyster. No. <laughs> yeah. Ask yeah, someone to go to Rome if you can have some. <laughs> Get kicked out of Italy. Get out. <laughs> Get out. Oh. Uh, never eat oyster. Pals are a recurring theme in her book. I bet they are, Jen. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, just add some lemon juice. Yeah, apparently. I, I've had them with just lemon juice. Lovely, just lemon juice, just Tabasco, just vinegar. But then I've had them with like shallots and and stuff. Mm. The first time I had an oyster, it was in Whitstable, and we we're in this uh, the seafood restaurant or whatever it was, and they had oysters on the menu. I was like, "We're, we're Whitstable, let's do it." So I, me and the <laughs> other, uh, there was four of us, and two of us were like, "Let's do it, let's try." The other two were like, "Oh no!" So we give it a go. <laughs> And I'm like, I've seen people have them on TV. So I'm like, okay. So you kind of like go slurp it up. So I've whacked a load of Tabasco on and I've lifted the oyster up. And I didn't think to get the little fork and like loosen it a bit and then like tip it in. I've just gone and just hit all this Tabasco, just hit the back oh. of my throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just, I mean, honestly, I don't know how I didn't pass out. <laughs> Literally just drinking Tabasco, Jack, yeah. instead of eating the oyster. Oops. <laughs> okay, let's move on from oysters, because I feel like we could talk about that for a long time. Um, <laughs> Kitty's betrayal. So we're moving on in the plot a bit here, but I guess this is the first big thing that happens. This is what puts Nan's trajectory on quite a interesting course. Um, mm. When Kitty hooks up with the manager guy, right? Yeah. Is he a manager? What is his yeah. name? I've actually his forgotten name? his name. It's been I've a month since I've read this. Walter? Is it Walter? Might be Walter. Yeah. Like that. He, um... I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 uh, the whole betrayal thing, I could see it, I could kind of see it coming when she was leaving early. I kind of was like, mm. we're going back early, something's gonna happen. And, um, yeah, I could kind of see that happening. And when she went back, I felt very sorry for her as well, because that was kind of part of this, this whole storyline of going back and then not feeling to actually fit in. So maybe that's also why mm. she didn't go back eventually. Yeah. But, um, Kitty though, what a bitch. <laughs> 
I thought that. Yeah. I, yeah. I felt like she was quite a bitch all the way through, to be fair, mm. because she very much hit the relationship, didn't she? And she was quite yeah. condescending. Um, I'm going to have to pop back. I'll be back in a minute. Sorry. I'm just going to mute myself. No, no, it's right. Yeah, so, she was, um, um, I, I totally agree. I thought she was awful throughout, to be honest. Um, yeah. Like, very much kind of got led Nan into all of this theatre world and so on and wanted like basically just wanted it all didn't she but yeah didn't want any of the consequences of it mm. and if anyone so much as mentioned the fact that like of her being a Tom she'd be yeah. like ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that though, I meant that for the reader, I think it was quite obvious that Kitty mm. was, that Kitty and Nan were never going to be happy together. No. Um, and that Kitty was probably never going to go down that route. She was always probably going to head to a more traditional route because she couldn't cope yeah. with the, like the stigma of it almost. Mm. Uh, but poor Nan didn't see that coming. No. <laughs> I did feel really sorry for her when she just sort of up and left and she had nothing. I did feel really bad for mm. her in that moment. Yeah. I, it always makes me really, really upset in a book when somebody will literally walk away from everything that they've got as well. Mm. Like, um, it reminds me of, and this is the worst example of it, is the bit in Demon where he gets stuff stolen from him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> no, he has nothing. He works so hard for that. He works so hard. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. like the version of that, but in this book, it just she just cuts it off, doesn't take her money, doesn't take anything, just runs yeah. away. And then, like to rub salt in the wound, we later then see that she's started up this show with her then husband, right? Mm. And Nan sees it, and you're like, "That's that's not very nice, is it?" <laughs> Not very no. nice. No. Um, and even right at the end, when we see her again, I'm like, just go away, crawl under a rock. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine if she would have been like, oh, I still love Kitty at the end? I would have been like, ah! <laughs> I, I thought she would for a minute. I, like, no. I did too. Yeah, no, I did too. I thought she'd have the, the gall to do it. But I was yeah. like, please have learnt your lesson. Please, please, please don't go back to her. Yeah, that would have been bad. It would have been bad. Um, so obviously from that betrayal, it throws uh, poor old Nan into quite a situation where she's on the streets of 19th century London. Uh, and so sort of class and obviously the sex trade come into effect in the book here quite heavily. Um, and I thought the class thing was really well done because we sort of see Nan move through always sort of a lower class, but through different levels of that as she sort of progresses through the book. She always sort of goes up a level when she moves to London with Kitty and she has things and she has this apartment and she's got a bit of fame. And then we see her going right down to the bottom, don't we? So uh, I don't know what your thoughts are on the class betrayal. I am. Um, I, I really like the whole setting <clears throat> and the whole exploration of um, the sort of the queer society as well, and how Ooh. that worked, and all the coding. And I really enjoyed <clears throat> how um, Sarah Waters kind of explored, like the whole thing of nineteenth-century London, the music halls, and how they were different depending on what part of London you were in. You know how rowdy they could get or how upmarket they were. Um, and then like that whole, like you said, she goes from, at one point, she's completely like living in a DOS house, you know, like, and she's she's completely destitute. And then she's <clears throat> living in the highest of, you know, society at one point. And she's in everything in between, like with that nice middle-class woman and her daughter, yeah. who I was just <laughs> like, don't leave them. <laughs> but you didn't even love them. Oh. <laughs> Why are you leaving them? They're just happy. They don't care that you go out, you know, 
dressed as in your suit and you come back and they don't question you and they're just lovely yeah so um but she's been through this kind of but i love the whole world that sarah waters created because it all felt very real i thought that's mm. what i think was a real strength for the book yeah is because she her as a historical fiction writer she made it all very believable and mm. then that whole um feminism class kind of stuff at the end like you know the the votes for women and the the po political side of things that she ended mm. up getting involved with through mm. and i've forgotten everybody's name but who she ended up with eventually but um what is her Sorry. name Nata. yes but basically the the whole i thought the the, 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 the society okay. the sort of context the politics i thought was all really well done i enjoyed it i enjoyed those aspects of the book um yeah yeah. Any mm. thoughts on her falling into sex work, Alice? <laughs> oh, thanks for that one. I was just going to say, actually, before I say anything about that, <laughs> in the 19th century London, like there was no aspect of the writing and the building of this picture of London that I didn't believe. I was totally yeah. there. I was exactly. Like, if this is what Sarah Waters says Victorian London was like, this is what Victorian London was like. Also, like, all the bits that she went to, like, you know, when you were saying, like, oh, I really enjoyed the bits in Whitstable because I'm really familiar with Whitstable. Yeah. It was the same. Like, the bits she was in London, where mm. she was going up, and, like, and the certain parts of London she was in, she was in, she wasn't always in the central sort of west end near the theatre. No. She, was, she was in Hackney. She was everywhere. And I'm like, oh, I know all these bits she's talking about. Yeah. She went to Upper Street at one point. I was like, amazing. <laughs> like, yeah. she needs I was like, that's where I'm from. <laughs> so it was kind of like, it was all very uh, engaging because, like, she, she I mm. felt like it was, it did feel very real to me. Mm, as someone also really knows London, me. modern day London quite well. It kind of like, and also those lots of those pubs and theatres are still about. So it's, it was really interesting. Mm. Um, and really even I think the bits of London that I don't <clears> know as well, like I felt like I knew them better through this book. Like I could really picture yeah. like the markets that she went through and the like all yeah. the different types of housing she lived in oh, it just yeah. seemed super real and that was what i thought like when i when i say i thought there's definitely even better to come from this author and this is already amazing the thing i probably found most amazing was like the evocation of place and time yeah like, yeah Thought and I think that's really that's good. a massive skill of hers as a writer, which is why mm. I was so excited to read this book. Because yeah. <laughs> Fingersmith was like that. It was just like I was just completely I'm there. Just she's she sets up the like time and place brilliantly. Character writing's amazing, the plotting's amazing. So I was like, yeah, she's she's done it again with this. Because as soon as I opened it up and was reading about her life as an oyster girl in Whitstable, I was like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm I'm in this place. This is mm. right. And she's you know great as a, as a historical fiction writer she, she's top class i think she's great mm. Mm. but as to your yeah. original question of falling into the sex trade um i i just feel like i think i knew that that was coming i think that that was where the book was headed uh, okay. I, like i don't know i knew there was going to be the theater and then once she was kind of on the streets I just thought it was kind of what would happen. I don't know why. I could, like, mm. but I, I mean, the way it initially came about, like taking just the initial sex work that she started doing herself, it didn't seem like that huge of a leap with her from like she's going out dressed up as the men and going about. Mm. And it's like, she almost seemed to see it as like an extension of being on stage. Yeah, she was playing um, a part. Yeah. Playing. In fact, for most of it, she's playing a part, isn't she? She's not, yeah. she's not, she kind of loses herself in this part. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you're I, right. It's kind of like a, like a, like a, a th an acting job for her initially. Yeah. And mm. I, I was shocked, but I think maybe I already did know that that was part of the plot. I, I knew. It said it's super shocked. Yeah, in the in the blurb, it said she she became a rent boy, and I was like, "How's that? Yeah. How does that work?" <laughs> I think that was where I'd seen it. <laughs> so I yes, like, it says. Oh, uh, I don't think I read the blurb. <laughs> Boys and girl turned music hall star turned rent boy. I was like, "Say what?" <laughs> so, and I'm like, 
Tom, what's a Tom? And now I know. There you go. <laughs> so Ooh. learning all of that yes. kind of all of that quite sort oh, of yeah. um, queer coding and vernacular as well. Um, mm. I was found really fascinating. You know, um, mm. it was really interesting. Yeah. I thought. I, yeah. Yeah. But her, so, her... <laughs> I think what was quite interesting, and going, going on a bit of a tangent, but I think Sarah Waters' exploration of gender in a time where gender wasn't really explored in the way it is today, right, was really interesting because mm. some of these characters, I think, potentially would have been trans or non-binary, um, but that wasn't, it was a thing, but it wasn't really discussed in Victorian Era, also, London, don't forget, right, but... it wasn't really discussed as much I suppose at the time Sarah Waters was writing this book like mm, that you know so actually this is you know pre sort of the the, the open discussion about trans like issues mm. and rights so when she was writing this book that wasn't an open discussion people were having mm, so no. it's a very interesting I think you're right expression of how she she feels better when she's dressed as a man but she definitely mm. doesn't want to be a man mm. she, because I feel she's she's a lesbian female so she because she doesn't sort of have this I don't think she feels this need to be a man but she likes to dress as one and she likes to be perceived as one mm. and it's, it's, it's yeah. interesting but then there's also that whole idea of how safe she was once she dressed as a man because when she was on her own initially, she just wasn't safe. And mm, um, yeah. the woman wandering the streets of London on her own, clearly down on her luck. So yeah. it was a safety thing as well. But I remember when she first gets her hair cut and she first puts on the suits mm. and stuff like that, mm. and she starts to feel more comfortable, I suppose, in, mm. in that role. So I don't know. And I think it was quite nice to this comment from Paris, Texas. He said it, it pairs quite well with The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. Mm -hmm. And I think that's right. Because obviously, that does look at females in the sex trade, right, in London in that era. Um, and so you can see that potentially Nan was quite clever in what she did. She definitely protected herself by dressing as a boy. Yeah. Uh, though obviously that had dangers of its own. But I do think they're, um, they're a good pairing for books, I would agree. Mm. I, I thought that um, all of that to me, again, coming back to it, it's, it seemed to me for Nancy, it was all part of like these layers of persona that she had, this acting. And I, I could be wrong, but I feel like further towards the end, after she's come out of the situation we're probably going to talk about next, she um, mm -hmm. like, she talks about kind of shedding that boy persona and like can i exist in a new persona of where i can be a cleaner for this person and can it just mm. be that like i can act again and it's like i think there was an interesting discussion even within the with the even within the character herself like what what within her life did she consider acting and what was the real Nancy? Mm. Um, she, I think she does discuss it a bit. Yeah, um, I think when she, yeah. so in, the, in the beginning of the book, well, in most of the book, I don't think she really knows no. who she is. And I think the society that she's in makes it very difficult for her to explore that. So mm. she's kind of forced down these avenues where she acts because actually to be who she is isn't acceptable in that society. Yeah. When you look at the way her sister reacted to it and was like, just absolutely no, do not talk to me about this. Don't get into it. Don't talk to me about it. Mm -hmm. Disown you kind of thing. It's almost like, I feel like that was what made her break with her family because she was like, well, if my sister can't even accept yeah. any part of me like that, then my whole family doesn't accept it sort of thing because yeah. they don't know about it. Um, I still think she could have gone back to them, but well. <laughs> I do too. I just think as well that return that the visit back that was unsuccessful, where she brought them all these things, and then they're all a bit like, "Oh, these are a bit too posh for us," kind of thing. This <clears throat> sort of where she's kind of had this um, sort of class mobility, if you like, social mobility that's happened to her. So she's now got this money, and she goes back to them. She brings them all this stuff, and she, I think that was a big part of why she didn't go back as well, because I think she felt 
completely out of place within her own family at that point. Yeah. And that was quite sad, actually. That section it was really sad. I thought, and um, yeah, but the whole <clears throat> the whole part of her in this gender role. I think you're right when you were talking about that part, Alice, where she is having this conversation. I remember that in when she's deciding because she's so desperately be taken in by someone anyway mm. kind of thing that she is like oh I'll, I'll clean and I'll look after the baby and it'll be fine and blah blah blah, blah. Mm. and then she but she she's immediately almost regretting her decision once she realizes the hard mm. work she's playing at being a, a cleaner and a and someone who's yeah. like and then when she goes to the work involved she's like oh, that got old pretty quickly you know yeah. so she's she has these visions of herself doing these things when they're mm. at the reality hits it's like oh it's it's real it's not just pretend it's not going to mm. be just one night's work mm. it's like it's a whole it's this is a life you know but um, she is kind of like as you said she is kind of like finding out who she is and she doesn't really know no. who she is at this point I think she she's very is. much like a coming of age mm. in the extreme mm. <laughs> type of yeah. story um yeah yeah I think the other thing for me because I I knew that this book was saucy in yes. <laughs> in inverted commas um and I know there was some scenes obviously with Kitty but it wasn't until she began working in the sex trade that I that my eyebrows started to go um uh, <laughs> and obviously it, it, it it accelerated from that point, but it, um, yeah, it's not my usual kind of book. So at, at that point, when she's doing those things, it... <laughs> things got extremely spicy, extremely oh, quickly. Right. And like, I just found that was, this is the thing with my problem with her as a character is mm. she's so like, all over the place and I know she is all over the place because like mm -hmm. we've just talked about the fact she doesn't know who she is but one minute she's this completely innocent oyster girl who doesn't know anything about same-sex relationships so to the point where she doesn't yeah. know it's even wrong right so and then then she's this um really innocent like don't look at me I'm really shy dressing this woman blah blah then she's on the stage then she's basically doing what she's doing I mean I, honestly she she falls into that like how did she know what yeah she has to do with with with, with the man with her parts do you know what I mean yeah. like she suddenly she got into that really quickly and like didn't seem to be bo bothered about it and I think Ooh. it's a bit of a shock for, for someone who's never done it before surely <laughs> it's like it just she just was like ah it's fine as if she just picked up a like you said it's like another acting job but it's not quite is it because it's still no. you know yeah. doing what she's doing and she's I mean she I don't know what she takes pleasure in the power of it I don't know but <laughs> honestly I'm like this doesn't read very realistic to me in terms of how quickly she's like a duck to water <laughs> she's just like I'm there you know yeah let's not I talk about ducks yeah no don't get into <laughs> that ducks kind of like like another discussion about ducks but yeah no it's just i just found it like how has she gone from being that innocent girl then she's you know enjoying yeah. her like exploration of first love and first sex with her her you know her girlfriend and then she's gone from this lovely sapphic delightful you know romance to back streets with men that she's never met before it's like I don't know I don't know how that just she that was just too easy a transformation for me even with the thought that she's acting a part she might be acting a part but you're still having to do certain things yeah I think it was a bit rushed um Jen said, I reread the book a year ago and weirdly I was expecting Nan and Keith to be back together at the end. I can never remember how it ends. I can never remember how any book ends. Um, her Victorian set books are my favourite. I think she does a superb Yes, book. definitely. Completely agree. Um, Zach, did you feel like the spice was way overhyped? Dozens of things happened, but it was only explicit three or four times. That was enough for me, Zach, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, plenty for me. I, I found, 
like the <clears throat> like she, you know fingersmith has also got some spice in it but nothing to it, it i think the shock for me with the tipping the velvet was what we got we're about to talk about really was, was diana <laughs> the box i think <laughs> the well, box yeah yeah well i think that um I was like, because people have been like, oh, it's really, really spicy. Oh, it's so saucy. Oh. I was like, oh, this isn't my usual type of book then. And then we'd gone quite a long way, I feel, without really anything mm. explicit. And then we did get into the sex work a little bit. But I was like, OK. That wasn't that explicit either, the way she described it, yeah, was it? Yeah, I was like, OK. Yeah. If that's <laughs> that's okay, okay. Then, then that's not too spicy, really. And then it was like... <laughs> oh my god <laughs> we're gonna do two more comments and then we're gonna to get to that we're gonna to get to it so firstly your mum is baiting me alice <laughs> of course she is baiting me how do i feel about oysters on pizza I feel like it's a travesty jane a travesty <laughs> i think whoever does that should not be allowed to eat pizza quite frankly <laughs> ever how dare they? I, I agree. Um, <laughs> uh, Jennifer thinks it was uh, suspects it was pretty spicy for its time. Quite possibly. I think it's still I, very. I mean, for me, it's very spicy because I, I'm, you know, I, I don't mind if it's good part of the storyline. It's fine, but yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, I've really literally spicy. complained about books in wrap ups that have one sex scene, so I am not the person <laughs> to I'm give this book to. It could be a th the three least saucy book readers that we know yeah. <laughs> so actually you know yeah we're definitely more the kind of people that like fingernails to be removed from people in books <laughs> rather than... yeah. i'm just gonna go behind my book for this section i think diana diana and oh, the diana. oh what an absolute i mean a, abusive power trippy like mm. it was a proper like dominatrix kind of submissive yeah. relationship wasn't it it was like you I do what think I she does have redeeming qualities i'm gonna throw no. out there and say i think she was evil yeah abuse i mean absolutely massively abusive yeah. but i suppose um but it just shows you doesn't it we've just been talking about here's me waving my work getting on my working class soapbox We've just been talking about how dangerous it is to be a woman and to be a gay woman at that time in Victoria London, but not for her because she was loaded. So she yeah. can have her gay, like, lesbian parties and 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 have her club that she goes to and have her her box of <laughs> stuff and, and have, like, her living, like, <laughs> lover that she's, like, a like, slave, love slave. Yeah, around she London. was, though, wasn't she? She's like, right... You can come to my house and I'm going to like lavish you with all the good things. You can have as many baths as you like and as much food as you like. But I am literally going to lock you in the house and that's it yeah. for you. And you're here for yeah. me. And I'll have sex with you in a drive yeah. on. <laughs> so yes, whenever I want. And you'll be dressed up how I want you to be dressed. And you'll be ready when I'm ready for you to be ready. And you'll be like, so literally just and at that point, that's when kind of Nancy as well. She's living in this nice house with this nice family, and she's all oh, she's. I mean, she's still doing the street sex work, so that's not the nice thing. But she's could she could like she's got some sort of life going on for herself, and she meets this mm. woman, and she just completely gives into the hedonism, doesn't she? She wants all the luxury, and that point, I was like, Nan, I don't like you anymore. <laughs> I really, mm. I was a bit on the fence, but now I'm like, no, I don't like you anymore. Yeah. And Diana, and and she gets that made into trouble. You know, the mm. maid gets kicked out with her, who then robs her. And I was like, good for you, love. <laughs> yeah, I thought that too. I thought that too. I was, yeah, definitely yeah, not on Team Nan at that point. No, but Diana, though, an awful, awful person. But I found that whole upper class lesbian scene, like this, this societal scene, I mean, not the like, scene in the book. But I found that really interesting. <laughs> How you like? Not the scene in the book. Not the scene in the book. I mean, like the. Just to be clear, the, not the, the scene in the book. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, the, not the toy marks. <laughs> no. but, but, the, but the club that they had, and the fact that there were these sort of women having these open, secret, secret but open relationships with them, and it's like, but it just shows you 
okay, when it comes to comes to it, class and money doesn't matter. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if you're gay because you can have your life the way you live your life the way you want it. Not necessarily completely in the open, however, mm-hmm. of course, they still had to be secretive in some ways. But compared to working class, middle class lesbians mm-hmm. and gay men, it's like a different thing, isn't it? It's like, mm-hmm. I suppose, yeah. I don't know. I just found that was really fascinating. That kind of, mm. and it did make for a really interesting contrast with like the rest of the, like living situation she'd been in, the yeah. rest of the sex work, and all of that was like totally, totally different to this mm. like rich person who just throws money at it, basically. Yeah, yeah, and all of them, like all of her friends, were just horrible people. Yes, really, weren't they? That scene, um, the party, the party scene, where yeah. she thinks like, and what they want, they want the the maid to show them herself, yeah. like, and I was, and I was just like, this is horrendous. Mm. So awful people. Yeah, they're all very disgusting people, uh, and I think that was a commentary on class as well, right? Yes, right. completely. It's like, this is it. When you've got the money and you've got the status and you can't be touched by the law, practically, in these cases, a lot of these people, which yeah. isn't necessarily truly the case, because obviously if they were openly like that, they would basically be put, be taken to prison for it. If you're a woman, you're probably locked yeah. in an asylum for it. Um, yeah. And and I, but I just found this kind of, yeah, this the contrast between the two, the difference it was 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 interesting um but the box scene and everything else it's like <laughs> what's she gonna yeah. make her do but you're reading it like a horror like <laughs> box. i was like oh one eye closed it's gonna be in the box yeah um bern is saying if that diana section was a little bit longer i might have just left the book to be honest yeah it's it just unpleasant it's- it was just unpleasant. Yeah. Um, Jen liked that Nan isn't entirely lovable. Well, I agree. Oh, yeah, I, like, I like a grey character, but I just found her like wildly swinging from innocent to this just kind of mm. awful person. Just a bit much for me. <laughs> but I actually mm. quite enjoyed that element of like, I felt like I wanted to shout at Nancy and be like, get it together. <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. It's, a good, it's good writing when you're actually yeah. that, you feel something about a character, you know? <laughs> Like yeah. that, I think. And I do think she had growth in the book. Mm. Yeah. But I think it took her a long time to get there. Yeah. And it was only really in the last 10 pages that she <laughs> turned into a semi decent human being. Um, Zach, I read The Story of O by oh, Pauline yeah, but... Reed. I've not heard of that. I've heard of it. A French BDSM book from 1955. Yeah, I think I'll just never put that on my TBR. Yeah, I won't <laughs> It's just not. It's just not for me. Um, unless some fingernails get removed, and then I might be more. Oh, I'll tell you what was interesting about Diana was the fact, and I, but this again was a power thing, was that all her servants were gay, or you know, like mm. she said, oh, so when they were like, but doesn't your servant mind? She's like, her, she was in a girl's home for this and this and this, mm. and this one was in yeah. a, you know, and it was like, so she's she's purposely recruited and surrounded mm. herself it was scary the way she used that yeah. as power over them yeah exactly she it was, was a terrifying story. human being horrible. yeah very much so yeah, and the thing about that is in those days it's like if you were a working class and you were at the mercy of anyone rich or, or upper class like mm. you're at their mercy they could literally have your life cut short by throwing get you thrown into prison get you deported to yeah. australia yeah. getting you like hung for something you know what i mean like it was yeah, frightening. 100%. 100%. And that brings us sort of to the last section of the book. Uh, Florence <laughs> and Ralph did Nan deserve them. Um, but one of the issues that I had with this section, and I don't know if you two felt the same, was Florence as a character, or the way that Nan and Florence met and then re-met, I found really unbelievable. You <laughs> met her once in a street 
like <laughs> and then suddenly she's like oh well I might be able to find her through her old workplace and then oh she just happened to get out a piece of paper with the address on and she just happened to, uh, it just all felt very convenient to me that whole mm -hmm. section um yeah yeah no was... I get that I, I I see that it was quite a like reach to turn up on her doorstep as well and mm. like as, when the, the whole getting to her house part yes but then to turn up on her doorstep and have Florence let her like stay the night but Ralph it was Ralph really wasn't it because he's such a mm. soft heart and oh, I love I Ralph. Ralph he was lovely um he was lovely. yeah and Florence's backstory was very interesting um mm. and raising her her like her partner's child and stuff yes it was it was Florence was a, a lovely person and I think it was interesting that Waters used that sort of juxtaposition between Florence and Nan where Florence had had similar experiences right mm. but made good decisions mm. <laughs> Nan had just made so many bad decisions that her life was unrecognizable by the time they met right mm. so yeah. I, 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 yeah. dislike I found like and also I found it was quite good that they didn't just sort of click and fall together I thought that mm. was good that was realistic because Florence really didn't like her and was really mistrustful of her for mm. quite some time and I felt mm. that was realistic sort of in in the the portrayal of how she kind of got her to because it took a long time and I think that was that was that felt realistic to me so Florence mm. wasn't just sudden it wasn't like insta love you know yeah um yeah i would agree <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Florence, florence as well with her group of friends and their pub they go to which is clearly a lesbian Ooh. pub like where they would go to so i will bring you to what did they call that pub it had an interesting name oh, I remember then. oh i'll have to look it up because <laughs> it was i thought it was really interesting as well because she suddenly realizes doesn't she she doesn't I don't think Nan any like realizes all of she suddenly realizes when she goes to the pub that the other Ooh. women are gay as well. And it's yeah. like you know, she's like, oh what's he yes. That's not the name of it. Yeah. I think as well, the sort of the misconception when Nan first rocks up at Florence's and she thinks obviously the baby is Florence and Ralph's and that they're a married couple. Um I quite liked that and then sort of discovering that that wasn't the case that was quite enjoyable for I, thought it was all done I couldn't see where it was going with that I was like mm -hmm. has she got married and now she's married this man but she's what's going on I just had I couldn't see where that was going at all um mm -hmm. oh that was it and in the pub that was the other thing and they just they she doesn't tell them that she was a famous musical star but she gets spotted oh, mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, because it it did, I did wonder, she, because in the beginning, her and Kitty were, it it was made out that they were really rising stars in music hall. And like yeah. hundreds and not thousands of people would go and see music hall shows a week. And they were like really big stars. They're making it really big. Why wasn't she recognised more? You know what I mean? Like, you know, you'd think <laughs> unless the first person <laughs> recognised her and she gets, but they had her picture, didn't they? on the on the on the wall yeah. and stuff but, yeah uh, that pub was where she was first recognized but i thought yeah because i almost forgot she was doing she she'd done that by that point i was like oh yeah you be on the stage <laughs> yeah a lot happened there were a lot of different sections in the book i felt mm. um which was good but i just felt that first bit dragged a bit mm. But yeah, Florence and Ralph, and I is, love the whole politics chat and they're so well read and they're so sort of, yes. they're really moral and they're like, you've got to think something beyond yourself. And she's like, oh, really? Yeah. I actually really enjoyed the bit when um, Nan is helping Ralph with his speech and like yeah. how to like project himself. Yeah. That bit I found really heartwarming. I thought, yes, Nan, at last, you're acting like a decent human being. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It was good. Yeah. Uh, Bor um, Berner agreeing that Florence had good reason not to trust Definitely not. Yet. Oh, Also, I've been because I um the other thing about there all these sort of uh, working class 
suffragettes and stuff, aren't they? They're like they're kind mm -hmm. of the suffrage movement, and they're like these unsung heroes of the suffragette movement. And I think yeah. I've talked about it before. Like uh, there's a uh, like lots of working class suffragettes who are unknown, not named, who went through far more for the political cause than their upper class counterparts did in lots of ways because they were treated so much more appallingly when they were, if they were arrested mm -hmm. and stuff like that mm -hmm. and, and and so it's kind of I, th I liked seeing that aspect in the book I thought it was an interesting um that that whole rally and the talk and then they want her to go around and give talks to g people up for stuff yeah. and, you know and I, I just found that whole um that whole part of the book really interesting there with the, the whole politics side of things that they're, they're, those two were so active in politics and you must have had it might must you these sort of marxist um thinkers yeah. at the time and yeah so I thought it was really and i would have preferred for that section to be padded over the initial yeah, music yeah. yeah like yeah yeah considering how pacey some of the middle sections were the first section did then look by comparison really really slow to get going yeah like yeah. i couldn't believe the volume of pages that had already gone by the time she even got to london and was in the music hall. yes yeah <laughs> um yeah it's like yeah it took a while yeah did she deserve them in the end did she redeem herself i don't i don't think yeah. she did <laughs> I think she's on her way to redeem. <laughs> maybe on I her think she was on her way. I think she had a way to go. I think Florence maybe let her guard down a bit too soon. I wouldn't have trusted now. Mm. Yeah. When she saw yeah. Zena, is it Zena, the maid at the end of the fair as well, and she sees her there, yeah. doesn't she? And she says, Diana's here. So that all comes together. And I was kind of hoping there would be a confrontation. <laughs> but what do you think yeah, about, though, like like, talking of what you said before about being a bit unbelievable and contrived how she came back to Florence. Do you not think it was a little bit unbelievable at the end that they go to this event and literally she's everyone she's met in the entire book turns up. Yeah. 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 All yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Everyone there, Kitty and yeah. Yeah. Like, there you go. We'll go to an event where you'll be able to confront every person from your past. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it's, yeah. it's kind of like it is. A, it is supposed to be a very big one-off kind of political thing, like never been done before, mm. never been seen before. So mm. possibly, but I don't know. It is a reach. It is a reach. Yeah, I yeah. was a bit like, okay, I'll suspend my disbelief for this, but is it believable that all of those people turned up and that? Not just that they turned up, but that she actually actively bumped into all of them. Saw yeah. them, yeah. 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 It was yeah. not at a not big, big event. Really so the ultimate question is, did you like Nan? I mean, we've talked about this quite a lot, but I think this sort of wraps up the book. Um, because really it was Nan's story and it was mm. about her growth as a character. Um, so Jack, what what would you say about Nan? Ugh. I really liked her in the beginning. Um, I think up until the point where I suppose when she goes into the sex work and she's starting to like mm. be a bit um, kind of duplicitous, I suppose. But then I really oh, I kind of was like this. Oh, I like you. And then it kind of plummeted a little bit, not because she was doing sex work, but because she was being a bit duplicitous in the way she was behaving. And mm. then she meets Diana, and it was just—I just went off a cliff like that. I don't like yeah. you at all. And when she was trying, and when she was trying to get into Florence's good graces, I was just like, "Oh, you awful! You're just yeah, you're I awful. Like Why don't you like you?" And she kind of redeemed herself a little bit for me towards the end with the whole sort of like she really did start to care for Florence and Ralph, and Ralph particularly was just such a nice character. And she was doing stuff for him just out of pure love for him. And I thought well, that kind of redeemed it a little bit. But I just think she's she's not a good person. Like she's I, I think it would all I don't believe that after everything she did and the way she behaved, the the, the lack of morals and the lack of um giving a shit about people that she had for quite a bit of that book, I felt you're not getting over that that's in like that's not something that you completely turn your back on like you've got something in you that allows you to be that cruel and mean to people I, I just don't 
fine. She'd have a redeem. She'd be completely redeemed. I think she'll get bored with Florence in a few years and she'll be off with someone else. I reckon that's the end of that story. Yeah, I, I thought that too. Alice, did you have a different view? I don't know. I feel like at the end, like if I'd have not liked Nan, I feel like I wouldn't have minded if she went off with Kitty because it would just suit her. It's just like, yeah, fine, you're horrible, off you go. But I was happy for her that she was happy at the end and that Florence didn't leave her. So that just made me think that I must have kind of liked her. Um, I think it works out. She is not very redeemable. I do agree with you on that. Like, she was pretty awful for a vast proportion of this book and her decision making was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Like, honestly, and some of the times that she made the terrible decisions, it wasn't even like you could say she had no choice but to do that. She had loads of choices. Yes, true. She did have lots of choices. Like, even in that time and in that society and all of that, I just felt like she had more options than the ones she was taking. Yeah. Um, mm. But did I like her? I don't really know. <laughs> I don't actually know. Um, <laughs> I, I suppose it depends on the day. Yeah. I'm going to give her a rooting for it to, Rooting for it to end well, because mm. I, I think because I, I liked Florence and Ralph, and I kind yeah. of wanted it to end well for them, and I didn't want, like, yeah. her... Kitty, I wanted Kitty to redeem herself yeah. for them, but, mm. but ultimately I don't think she is... Yeah, like I said, she's going to run off with someone else. <laughs> No, but I wouldn't want her to do that. I, no, I don't her want to her to, but I feel with a character, I think that's what she's going to do. I think yeah. I wanted her to have learned her lesson. Oh, we want that. And I yeah. think that being accepted back by Florence, even after Florence thought she'd gone off with somebody, was kind of a suitable ending. Yeah, mm. I, I, she was all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zach is saying that, uh, that his biggest complaint was he found the constant portrait use of words like queer to be annoying. Someone who just accepts that and it's not a big deal. It's of the time though, isn't it? The book. I mean, it's, it's it, in in that sense. I suppose it's kind of of the time and it's dated because actually, even when this was written, when was it written? Nineteen ninety-eight, I think it was published. Right definitely wasn't sort of a thing that people talked mm. about as much I, I even then i feel like mm. that use of that language was more derogatory and it wasn't used as a sort of do you know what i mean it wasn't yeah an open conversation so mm. i feel like for the time it was probably very uh cutting edge and what have you <laughs> but yeah but now yeah i see what you could say about that mm. yeah uh, Berna, I liked reading about her. She was interesting, but I actually liked her at the end only. Yeah, mm. yeah. She definitely went on a journey. That's for sure. Mm. She, um, yeah. I, I do think she was more likable come the end, but I just, I, I just by that point, I just didn't trust her. No. But thinking more about Nan and the ending, I think I really liked the sort of little sort of found family that they'd got together. Like her and Ralph and the baby and Florence. And it was just like, oh, I like that ending for yeah. her sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. um, that ending. But that that question has actually thrown me. Do you like Nan? Do I? I, I like know. the ending and I like their family and I like Ralph and I like Florence. I don't yeah. think I still don't trust, like, as Gemma's like, don't trust her. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I don't trust her. Mm -hmm. I think she's, for the moment, she's like, oh, I love this. But until yeah. something else comes along. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But she was prepared to give away all her money to the good cause. I, then I, hope she goes to see her I hope she goes to see her mummy. Yes. I bet she didn't. My poor mum. <laughs> poor mum. <laughs> poor mum. <laughs> so I think that comes to the end of our points for discussion if anyone's got anything in the comments that you want to raise please do uh jack alice is there anything else you wanted to add mm. oh i watched the uh as well a bit of the adaptation it's on youtube Ooh. oh is it remember the adaptation was on yeah, 
Um, and it was a big deal when it was on. And um, it's Keely Hawes. Yeah, my mum loves Keely Hawes. She I love her. Hawes, I it? love, love, love her. And she was in. Um, I loved her in It's a Sin, and I love, I love her in the Durrells. I love the Durrells. But <laughs> she, she's, um, she's so good, and she's in that, and she's Kitty. Yeah. But, yeah, she's Kitty in it. And um, they play Nan much more. I only watched the first few and I kind of watched a bit up until she meets Diana. But Kitty seems to be a much more, not Kitty, Nan seems to be a much more innocent character. I can't remember who plays her. Okay. Also, um, in the book, in the, in the adaptation, the start of it, she's basically engaged because she talks about her, part, her boyfriend, doesn't she? Mm. She isn't quite engaged to him, but they're stepping out. But you mm. barely see him in the book. But in the TV show, they make a bit more of a big deal about it. And I think I feel like it's someone like Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I feel like someone like that. Like someone you're like, oh, you weren't very famous. Yeah, yeah. Though, playing I, feel it like, a bit I feel like in the book, he did he did think he was engaged to her, though. That's it. He yeah. might have done yeah. it. Or at least promised to her, if not yeah. fully but engaged. In the, in the TV show, she's like stepping out of him, but they're like, sitting in a boat and he's trying it on with her like on the seat on the beach they like to hide out of the way and they're like kissing and cuddling and he's trying it on with her and stuff so it's like she's she's got this kind of little bit of experience and then in she's the, like sorry i'm going to go to the theater 10 times a week and see um <laughs> see a show yeah okay we've very well done i feel like every live show we've had i've been like oh there's an adaptation of this i'll watch that <laughs> Have I watched yeah. a single FOMO adaptation yet? No. Watch I Capture the Castle. It's quite good. Oh, I Capture the Castle. We've always lived in the castle. I keep, keep doing that. We have always lived in the castle. My mum lent me the DVD <laughs> of I Capture the Castle, like, when we did I Capture the Castle, like, over a year ago. Haven't watched it. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, Zach, he said, I waited for the discussion to give a final rating. It could have gone up to 4.25. I'm going to talk it down. <laughs> oh, no. The thing is, the it's, a well, issues with it. it's a well loved, well loved classic. And I imagine when it came out, it's very like, like it was a real like mainstream book, but it wasn't a mainstream book for the time. Do you know what I mean? It's like, must have been yeah. really trailblazing. For the time, mm. um, and oh, I was a bookseller at the time. I was a bookseller at the time. I was a bookseller back then, and I, I, I think, and I remember it being on like I never read it, but I remember it being a big deal, and I remember the adaptation mm. being a massive deal. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I don't think any book has ever made me like have the feeling that my eyes might be about to pop out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> like this one particular scene in this did. <laughs> I could actually feel it as I was reading. I was, I was like, reading my that eyes scene. are coming further and further out of my head. <laughs> I was reading that scene on the train. <laughs> I, God, I would have died. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I would have felt like everyone knew what I was reading about. Oh dear, that's so yeah. funny. At least you weren't listening and hanging out the laundry. Oh yeah, that has happened to me before <laughs> in dodgy scenes. Been there, been there, done that. Mm. Oh dear. So I think with that, we will probably close this yes. book club discussion. Thank you to everyone who joined. Um, next book. Sorry, Jack. So I was going to say mm. next book. The next book. Have you started it yet? No. No, no I'm waiting till closer to the time. Even though it's been a long time. Yeah, even though it's middle grade so March the at the moment. Is, yeah, yeah, I haven't got to it this month. The Bridge to Terabithia, um, and the live show will be on Jack's channel at the end of April, in theory. Um, yeah, really. Obviously, if we can find diaries. <laughs> we will try not to, be, not to be a month late this time. But yes, The Bridge to Terabithia, children's book. I can't remember the author's name. Oh, it's it's Catherine. Catherine. Yes, Catherine. Is it Patterson? Did you say? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a um, children's classic. Um, a children's classic tug at the heartstrings. Jack, like, have you read it before? Because I, I feel have. like you you have yeah. read it. Before. But it's been a long time since I've read it, so I've got a vague vagueness about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a long time. 
It's one of those books that I feel like I've read about at least once in a book about books. Yeah. And that's why I have so much FOMO about it. Yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to it because I feel like um, if it, I think and it, it's one of those books, children's books, that's a really just a well-written book. Mm. And I want to see if it stands up still for me. Yeah. You know? um, like Good Night, Mr. Tom. Oh, one of my books of the oh. year. That book, I could read that again. I just cried and cried at that. That just got me. Yeah. Right. Well, I think we'll say thank you very much and goodbye to all you lovely viewers and commenters. Oh, hit the like button if you're still here. That'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> hit the like Jim button. Didn't come. We didn't have Jim to say. Jim didn't come. I'm surprised that Jim did read this one as well. He's he really he read. He did. I expect it's a really late time where Jim is. It must be. Yeah, it must be actually. Maybe. Oh, it might be. Yeah. Um, so yes and we will let you know when we have a date for the next one and yeah happy oh happy. easter weekend for those yeah. that celebrate yes <laughs> we'll see you later Bye. 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 Bye.